Good morning, everyone. This is a beautiful section where we have started the journey on C functions. C functions. And we've discussed about what a nested loop is all about and how to use them. We've discussed what is a function and how to use them and the difference between a declaration and a, and a definition of functions. Here between declaration of functions and definition of functions. So we've discussed about them. So from that, we continue the journey. So to many that missed the class yesterday, we have it in record, so it will be posted in the YouTube channel. You can always watch it there and subscribe to it. So let's quickly discuss. Now, we've discussed this yesterday, what function declaration is. And this is what that your function declaration will always have return type, then function name and the parameter list. So we've discussed this, and this is an example of a function declarations. Always come with what with your semicolon. Why function definition? You don't, the difference is that what? You don't use semicolon, but you have a body, a body of it. You have body, let me see if we have, still have the example. So this is function definition. This is an example of function definition. You have this, your function name, the data type, and the parameter list. Then you have this open bracket and close bracket. So inside it, you defined your function. So this is called function body. So let's move to this now. Calling a function. Then, if you are hearing about function declaration, it also means it also means your prototype. It refers to your prototype. So that's a function calling a function while creating a C function you give a definition of what that function will do for you you don't just call a C function without what defining what that function will do for you so and to use a function you will need to call that function in order to perform the defined tax I repeat while creating a C function, you must define what that function has to do for you. Now, let's go to this place. This is function definition. Function definition. So we have defined inside this function, and the function name is what is max, is max, which is maximum number. And we defined that inside this function, we want to compare between what the norm1 and norm2 and to have return statement to return the what if norm1 is greater then return it else return what this norm2 so we expected a result to be what returned in this function so we have defined it so whenever we are now calling max we can always call the max and pass a value to it and when we call it we can call it in our main function and give it a value and it's going to give us a value. Let me see an example. Um, so let me copy this. Um,
let me I want to search for some file we had yesterday. Is it possible? Alright, let me just create another one. Now, if you are talking of function declaration, this is how to declare your function. Your hash include. You know, we are talking of functions can be separated into a different file. I'm just like recapping what I've done yesterday. So is what we have. We can be separated in a different file, and. The file that contains the declaration of our function must always make a reference to when we are calling that function. And we know the organization we are working with, we have it to only separate it into this file known as what? Your main. Your main.h. And inside your main.h, you have a function declaration. So this function. I want to declare, I expect it to return a value for me, an integer. So make me to declare this integer. And I want to add what the function name. We said it must always have a function name. So I want to make it as what addition. Then it will have parameter list. And the parameter list, because I want to add sum of two numbers. So I'm going to declare it as int. I can make it a and int b. In P. So I terminate it. So this thing is called function declaration. Function declaration. So you declare your function declaration, you terminate it, and this is also known as what? As a prototype. As a prototype. Now, you can always call, declare this, so let me copy it and you paste it here. So now I want to define what this function should do for me. I want to define it. Therefore, I need to define it in a what? In a function body. This uh, opening and closing bracket that I opened is known as a function body. I want to define what this function will do for me. And actually looking at this, we know it's to add a and B together. And in this addition, I am expecting a result. So it should return a result for me. Therefore, I need to declare another variable for results. So I put my semicolon. Now, since this has been defined here, I can always what call it and assign a value to it. Which could be what? A equals, let's say, 350. Then your B is equals, um, let's say, 30. Then I need to what? To store those variable results equals to what? The A plus B to do the work. Then I want it to print something for me. To print. So the addition of A, which is percentage D, and B, percentage D, equals to percentage D, which will give us what the result. I put my new line, then space. So this uh, uh, format specifier is to receive its value from this A. Therefore, I call my A here, comma. Then the second one, the second uh, format specifier is to receive the value from B. So I put my B here, comma. Then the results, because it's to store the addition of this. So I call my result here as well, results. So after I've done that, I terminate it. Now, 
return zero as at successful. So now in my uh, my main function, which is the default, I'm not passing an argument. So I open the curly braces. So I have to call the function, the function, which is what? The function name as what? The addition. The addition. So with this now, I expect it to return results. So let me put results. So because I make use of print F here, there is need for another header file here, which is what hash include, because your printf is also a function that has been defined in this other file. So let's compile it and see what the result will be. Okay, uh, it's expecting a value here. Yeah? I'm coming, let me see. Let me give it 200, command and 40. But in that case, let me comment this out first. So we have it as what? 240. He has done the job for us. 200 plus 40, we have 240 as our result. So now, quickly, I want to write another function for greetings. For greetings. And to pass something across to actually differentiate what is happening here with the return statement here and what also happening in the declaration of our int here and what is happening here. So let's quickly look at it to compare and see actually how it worked. So I'm going to write a prototype known as my function declaration. And for me to do that, in this kind of function, I want to write function for greetings, for greetings. So in such a case, I don't expect it to return a value. It's not returning a value for me, so I make it void. Then I give it a function name, which is what? Greetings. Greetings is the function name. So in my parentheses, I don't have any uh, parameter list. So I make it void as well, because it's not taking any what? Arguments. So I terminate this, and now I need to what? To call or to bring this prototype, it was in another file, but I'm not separating it now, I'm writing it together, and give it what? The function body. The function body. So what I want this thing to do for me is to what? Is to print. 
I want it to print for me. Print F. Print Hello Samsung. So it's what I want it to do. So I terminate it. Here is not returning anything. It's not returning anything. So I make it just what the return there is opened. So in my main function here too is not what I'm not passing any arguments. In my main function now, I cannot call greets. I mean greetings. And here yeah, it should return zero if it's what runs successfully. So let's run this and see what the result will be. Let me use grids. So we have what? Hello, Samsung. Hello, Samsung. And it was returned is zero. So let me explain the difference between this and this. I'm going to explain that. So looking at this, so it depends on what I want to achieve, what I want my function to do for me. So I have defined it here. I want you to print hello something. Now, when it's printing an output, that is, let me say a string, which is not returning a value, is not returning an integer value. So in as much as it's not returning an integer value, I declare this as void because I don't expect it to return anything here. Why in my main function? This is a default in any C programming language. That is, in any modern C programming language. This is a default. Before, that is why you see some code or some YouTube channel that they don't declare this in. They will only write main and put what the curly braces. They will not even specify void and it will say run. Yes, that is the old style of writing your C function. So in this modern style of writing your C language, you have to declare this. And this is working in relation with this. And what does it mean? If this code runs successfully, it should return zero. When it returns zero, it means success. When it returns another number, that is non zero number, then that means it is not a success. There is tendency that your code runs success, I mean, it ran, that is, it compiled without an error. Without throwing you, without throwing you an error. But you don't have the right result you are looking for. So it's the excess of this. Though, you run it successfully, but what you have defined, you are yet to have the right result. The is going to give you what? A number not zero, which could be minus one, it could be 200, it could be 24589, depending on the type of uh, system, the operating system. So this one, this is what is just relating with, has nothing to do with what is coming here. So what is coming here now, whether it will return or not, depends on what you are defining your function to do. Now looking at this function, I have defined this function for me to, what's it called, to return an output which is what, integer. So this here, it should be what, an int, 
I declare it as in because I am expecting the return value I'm expecting here is an integer. Is an integer. So it needs to return that value for me. So therefore, I declare this one as int. Then this is a function name, and these are parameters. So when I because I'm expecting a result to be returned, so therefore I need to initialize the result. We call it what? Declaration of variable. This is a declaration of variable. So in this variable, now, this result has been initialized. I call this result here to take what? Whatever argument or whatever value we pass to this argument A plus whatever value we pass to this argument B. So to take it, then we terminate it. So having take that, we now give it what a statement to print for us. Print the addition of the A and B. This one is left to you. It's your style. If you don't want it to show the A and B, just want it to show the result. Just say the addition is... So it will just show you the result and you don't need to call for the variable A and B. You only call for result here to be printed out. Now, I expect this one to return. What is it returning? To return results. The result of what A and B. That's what I expect it to return for me. So which I've stated there. Why this one? If I call this function now, the function add, and it runs successfully, then this should be what? Uh, displayed on the screen to tell me that what it runs successfully. But you don't usually see it in all compiler. So it depends on the type of compiler you are using. So we know in Ubuntu, we don't usually have this uh, kind of return as we, as we have it here. So goodness. This is a function I wrote. Though don't unmute your mic. So we have the results, the addition of the addition of what this 200 when we call this function, which is add, and we pass an argument to it. And we have defined what this function should do here. In the what? In the user defined function function this one is called the user defined function why this one is what is the main function is the main function so we've seen how to declare a function how to call it how to define it and how to call that function so why this one is also looking at this this is the main function we have our prototype known as the word function declaration so here we are passing a value in the main function that is your a to have a value of 100 then your b to have value of what 200 so we expect it to return a result here so now calling your function calling a function to get the maximum value so which is going to store in this word results. So you call the maximum value and you pass A and B. So it's going to print the maximum values out for you when you do such. All right. So this is the continuation of what we are saying. This is called user's defined function. So you will see here that you have your what? Your head. I mean your prototype. Then with the function name. So you define what it wants you to do. You are expecting a result. So, if the num1 is greater than num2, then it should return what? Num1. Else, it should return what? Num2. Then return results. So, now, let's continue. We have kept max along with what? With main. And compile the source file while running the final executable. It will produce the following. If you run this code that I wanted to do, like I said, I have reason of where I wanted to copy the other time. It's just to portray on these examples that I have put here. So the max value will be 200. So the function arguments. So 
So function argument. If a function is to use argument, it must declare variables that accept the value of the argument. These variables are called the formal parameters of the function. They are called formal parameter. So this is an argument. This is an argument. So we call it a formal parameter of this function max. We call it a formal parameter. So a formal parameter behaves like other local variables inside the function. We are talking of local variables. This is an example of local variables. So these formal parameters, they also behave as this. They behave as this. I mean like it and are created upon upon entry into the function and destroyed upon exist so this uh, former parameter we are talking about they are also were created they are created upon entry when you enter your uh, the body of your code and let me use this the body of your function the body of the function so we can see what they are also what created they are created here they are created and they get destroyed afterwards it has performed the work after it has performed the work well, they get what erased that is they got destroyed and we have two ways of calling our arguments we can call it by value or we can call it by reference we can call it by value, we can call it by reference. Two ways of calling our... <laughs> so, we say we can call a function by value and we can call it by reference. Let's see how this can be done. The call by value method of passing argument to a function, it copies the actual value of an argument into the former I mean to the former parameter of the function. So in this case, the changes made to the parameter inside the function have no effect on the argument. It has no effect on the argument. So by default, C uses called by value to pass arguments. To pass arguments. So in general, it means that the code within your function cannot alter the argument used to call the function. So consider the following swap definition. So let's look at this example. Now, let's quickly study this <coughs> code. This is user's defined function. And this definition, we want it to swap. So we declare a prototype, which we call. So we have void, because it's not returning value. Void, then we have swap, then it's taking a formal parameter known as what int x and int y so this is your the body of the code so your int you declare this a new um, variable which is what int temp now this temp is storing the value of what of x of this x and now x is holding the value of y and y is holding the value of what of um, the temp. 
So then this will return. It's void, so it's returning nothing here. This is user defined function. Now in our um, in our main function now, we have what the elder file. I mean sorry the prototype or the function declaration here that we brought in here. This function declaration we brought it in here. So which what we have called here is being defined. Now inside this main we pass a value a which is what we pass 100 to variable a and 200 to variable b so we want it to print it should print before the swap of a value a and the swap value of b so after we swap we know we swap it here now swap the value a and b we call it to swap the value of a and b so if it does that so let's see the value after the swap whether it's going to change or not this is calling by value okay so let me delete the this function ahead all right let's have it there no it's not this So this is before swap, the value is 100. Then before swap, value of B is 200. So after we swap it, it is still what? 100 and 200. That is when we call by value. When we call it by value, it doesn't affect the arguments. Let me read it, this thing again. So while calling a function, we have to waste by value. So let's see. So the call by value method of passing argument to a function, it only copies the actual value of an argument into the former parameter. And let us see what is the actual value of our argument that it copied into the parameter. This is an argument. We declare this to be 100, we declare this to be 200. So it copied this and pass it into this parameter, into this former parameter. So, and how do we do that? We have to declare a new, um, a new variable to hold the value of what? Of the x, then x to hold the value of a, and I mean of y, and y to hold the value of this. So this is just like recursion. So to print this one first, before the swap, <clears throat> now we call this function swap this function swap and we now pass the arguments of a and b into our swap so since we've already what you know we've declared it here that our this term should hold the value of a i mean the value of x which is 100 then now this x now should be holding the value of y which is 200 so it has been what interchange we expect this x now to be holding the value of what 200. Now, this y to be holding the value of what the temp, which is what 100 here. So, that means if we call that swap, we expect this one to have the value of what the temp to have the value of 100, this one to have the value of 200. And this x now to have the value of what I mean, this y to have the value of what 100. So, that's what we should be having, but with this result now. We still have it at the same value. The value of A, let me put it line by line. We pass the what? The arguments of A, which is what? 100 and 200. So A now, it copied the value of A and put it in X. And when it put it in X, so which is what? 100. So this should be what? Holding value of 100. 
Y X now also what take the value of the B, which is 200 that has been copied into Y. So this X should have changed to what to Y. I mean to 200. Should have changed to 200, and Y, which is only the value of what 100 here. Yeah. So now we have tried to swap here by value. But looking at this now, we have our A, which is 100. The X here, the value of the uh, of A that we pass, which is 100 to X. So it's holding 100. So we expect this X now to change and hold this value of what? Of Y, which is 200. But looking at this A now, it is still what? 100. And now, this Y, that is holding the value of what? Of 10 which we know that our temp is storing the value of what? Of 100. So we expect this one to hold what? This y to become 100. So which is our b? It is still 200. So this is what? Before the swap is 100, 200. Why right after the swap, we have what? 100 and 200. It's still the same thing. So it doesn't affect. Let me go back to that statement to make emphasis on it. So it copy it, which we have seen. So by default, C programming uses call, call value to pass arguments. In general, it means that well, the code within a function cannot alter the argument used to call the function. The argument we use well, to call the function. Now, uh, Okay, now we call this function here. Yeah. We have called this function. That is before the swap. So when we call it now, and we expect it what to swap those value, and yet it does not change anything. Whether we call it, you see what the same argument that we pass to this A and B that will still be stored in the what in the call, or I mean in the call function when we call it. So now we want to write a function that swap a value. So in such a case, we don't expect it to return the result. This is void, then swap. We have swap. And in this swap, is to take what? Two arguments. Let's say x and y. And y. So this is our uh, function declaration. Now, in our entry points, which is in our um, um, what's it called main function, main function. <laughs> now we need to what to define. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, here yeah, now we need to declare a variable um int let me make it stem as we have used before then we have arguments we have arguments so let's make it int a give it a value of what 100 we have int b Give it a value of what? 200. Now, we expect this thing to print. Print the value before swap. Before swap. Uh, before swap, so which is percentage? Let's make a percentage D. Put your new line, then space. Um, okay, which is what A is coming from A. 
So let me put it this way then. The value of A before swap. The value of A, which is percentage dish. The percentage dish before swap. So also, print the value or percentage that is percentage B. Um, okay, so I should be having I should be having this thing here, additional something here. Uh, I'll come, I will come back to this. So let me first set this one first. Let me finish setting this one before swap. Percentage dish. Which is fish. Okay. Um, oops, sorry, I want to. Okay, let me put A. It's not this thing I needed here. It's A and to use value of A before swap and value of B before the swap. Now, I want to swap the value. So I need to call this swap. Actually, I've not defined the user defined function. I've not do that, but I'm just still setting this. Now I want to call the swap, which is what? Swap the A, comma, and the B. Then you terminate this one. So we want it to print. Print. the value of B, I mean of A, after swap. Prints. The value of B after swap. Which is what? B. Now, we expect it to return zero here. So now, 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 let's do the user defined function, which we have what void and the name of our function, which is swap, and taking and a, para, a former parameter as int x and int y. So we defined what it should do for us. So this temp I have here, I don't need it here. Let me delete it. So at this place, I declare my int temp. Now I want this my temp to store the value of x which we know, we have called the value of A and B to, to substitute, and the value of A here yeah, is 100, and the value of B is what is 200. Now, this one, from here like this, we expect it to print what? The value of A is 100, the value of B is 200. Why, when we call this function, the swap, we know what swap means, is to interchange it. If you exchange a number, that is the value of B, which is 200, should become the value of A, which is 100. And the value of A, which is 100, will become the value of B, which is what? 200. And before I can do that, 
I need another variable first that will first hold the first variables, that is the first uh, former parameter. So this thing is an argument. This thing we are passing is an argument. Why this one is called what? The former parameter in our function. And we said that what the argument you pass does not change the former parameter or the, the it does not change the what? The former parameter when you call it by value. So we are calling this thing by value now. And the value is what? Is what we have declared here. So we now want to set it down. Okay, this new variable to store the value of what? X. And we know this X is, is, is in reference to what? To this our A. Because it could be anything here. We can use any variable name here. So, it, but you surely know that what? This variable we are declaring is in reference to the first former parameter here. Why this second one? Is the what is in respect to this what this second parameter y? So now we now have this temp which is expected to be only the value of what a which is what 100 here. So this temp is only the value of 100. Now the x now is equals to the value of what of y. So now that x is only the value of y, that means this x should change to y. So here yeah, now, let me just put it as x and y. Probably this is what the conviction is. But why I will not use x and y here is because it is not what we call for here. It is not the argument we pass or that we inputted. So just take it that this a and y, it symbolizes what x and y. This your a and b symbolize your x and y. So this x now, which is this a, should be what 100 here and this y sorry the temp so we are not printing the temp we are not printing temp so we are we, we don't have business with that we have just declared it so that i can take the value of x now x now which is holding the value of y so we expect this x to change to the value of y which is 200 that is changing the value of b which is 200 now sorry so your y should be only the value of what? Of the temp. And what is the value of temp here? It's 100, which is the respect to the a here. And we know that it's 100 when we declare it, the argument we pass. So this temp should be 100. That means this y should be 100, and this x should be 200. That's what we are trying to pass across. So let's compile it now, and let us see. So can we see the value still remain the same? The value of A before swap 100. The value of B before swap is 200. The value of X before swap 100. The value of Y before swap is 200. So this is not what I mean. This should be what A to tell you that what it is constant. So this should be A and B. So that is what we are passing across. It doesn't change. So now we have seen that what it doesn't have any effect, does it change when we call by value? But if we are to call by reference, if we are to call by reference, then we need to what to declare our par former parameter as a pointer. As a pointer, we declare it as a pointer. Then when we declare it as a pointer, then we can now swap the value with an address. Uh, okay, so we can now call this value with an address. With an address. 
So to change it for us, but well, let me see, do I need to put my pointer here? Let me give it a try and see what it will be. Okay, it's still the same results. I'm coming. Let's see what's happening. <clears throat> Let me make this. Let me declare the pointer here. Yeah. So now we have our value being swapped. The value of A before swap is 100. Let's look at it. The value of A after swap is now 200. Why the value of B before swap is 200? Why the value of B after swap is 100? So it has swapped it. That is by reference. When it comes to by reference, it's changed the argument. But when it is by value, it doesn't change the argument. So it's the emphasis we are laying here. That we are laying. Now, if you are to call by value, if you are calling by value, you declare it as a pointer, your former parameter as a, as a pointer. So this is a pointer. So we know how this has been done. You define what you want us to do here. I mean, what to print in our print F. So when you are calling with a pointer, you call the address by using this ampersand to this argument that you pass and to this argument that you pass as well. So you use it. So, and you call this, you know how we what, how we print this down, how we call it. You declare your, a new variable here so as to store the value of this what, of X. So this is a pointer that is, a pointer of x, the pointer of x we hold the pointer of y, and the pointer of y we hold the value of this one, of this term. So with this now, if we want the argument to change our former parameter, we need to call it by reference. So that is the point of what we are emphasizing on. And let me recompile it again. Let me roll it and see. So we can see it as swap. It swap. A which is hundred becomes two hundred, and B which is two hundred becomes hundred. So now, what is the purpose of a function prototype? The purpose of a function prototype. So as we've now we've explained this. Function call by value, which we just finished now. So we've done all this. So function prototype. Number one, the function prototype side the following purpose. Number one, it tells the return type of the data that the function will return. So in our function prototype, we can always know what the return type will be. We can always know. Now, with this one now, with this one, let me move to prototype itself. Now, with this prototype now, it tells us what the return type. We know that the return type here is void. So it's not returning anything. So it tells us the return type. That's the number one important of what? Function prototype. And number two, Number two, it tells the number of arguments passed to the function. 
number of arguments that we are passing to the function. This is argument one, argument two. That okay, this swap we take what two arguments. So whatever we are now defining here in our main function cannot exceed two arguments. That is why we can only what pass two arguments here, which is A and B. So if you are passing another argument, it's going to what throw an error. Let me do that. But this kind of compiler we will not have an error, but it may not comp uh, compile. Let's see. Wow. So I still have it. It compiles. So let's see the results. When it comes to the other compiler that we are all used with, using GCC compiler to compile, we know it's going to tell us that what? This argument that we have passed here is undeclared. We have not declared it. So why are we what? Printing it, or I mean. So it's going to throw an error. But in this kind of compiler, so we are safe with this, but not with other compiler. Even in this git bash, it will not compile it. Because we declare it without what we expect it to take the number of arguments that has been. So you can try it on your home. So now it tells the, the data type of each of the past arguments. The data type. We know the data type of this argument is, uh, is an int. This one too is an int. So whatever you have to be declared here must be an int. You cannot declare int here and you are using what? A character here. Let me still see if this compiler will still take it as a... whether it will compile it. Because this compiler is funny to me. It's still compiled. All right, can you see the results? So we have for A, 97 for B, 90. So it picked the ASCII value, the ASCII value of A and B. So, but when it comes to the swabbing, to swab it, so the value of A becomes the value of B, yeah, which is what it swabbed this one. But having this negative sign, so it couldn't relate with that. So I don't know whether it has been generated. So that code is not sufficient. So I think why this, we may try it in other compiler, but I know in the compiler we are used with, which we know, it's going to throw an error. Uh, it's going to throw an error. And you know that what, evil character itself is a special type of an integer. So that is why is still able to compile it and give us the ASCII value. It gave us the ASCII value of it. That's why the file we interpret it as a, uh, what is it called? As a character. So it's still printed with the ASCII value. So with this kind of compiler, it's going to print it for us. But the system, the organization we are working with, will not accept that from us. It's going to throw an error for us. So let's have that at the back of the mind. So let's continue. Now, also it tells the order in which the arguments are passed to the function, the order. So we know the first argument we pass there is what is int x, and the second one is what is int y. 
Therefore, essentially, the function prototype specifies the input and output interlace to the function. That is what to give to the function and what to expect from the function. What to give and what we are expecting. So that tells why I said that this thing that you compile. I'm surprised anyway. So what I'm expecting is an integer. Actually, it's compiled and still gave me an integer result. It still gave me an integer result. So that kind of compiler is a special one that has converted it to the ASCII value. So let's forget about this one. So the header file. This is very, very important. Header files. A header file is a file with extension .h, which we know in the organization is usually what main .h. It could be any name, but it must just have this extension .h. .h. It could be odutola .h. It could be something .h. It could be toby .h, which contains a C function declarations. So in our header file, we have the function declaration inside this, which we know what a function declaration means. And you have the macro definitions to be shared between the server source files. And we are going to know what we by what macro definition. Macro definition. So there are two types of header files. The files that the programmer writes and the files that comes with the compiler. Example of the file that comes with the compiler is this. This std.io.h it comes with the compiler. Why the one by the programmer is the one we have always been defining when we declare what grid function, then uh, addition function. So it's by the what by the programmer we define that by ourselves. And we expect it was to share that that we have declared in the what in the macro that is a macro definition to be shared between the server source file so to share it within the what you know we don't surely have a separated file or many file so including a header file is equal to copy the content of the header file when we have this include include the main that is our main dot h it should include all those prototypes in our main dot h so it's just like copying it to the other file but we do we do not do it because it will what error prone and it is not a good idea to copy the content of the other file into the source file especially if we have multiple source files in our program when we have multiple source file so it's not always available it can be what error prone so to be a server side we don't usually copy it so we separate it it's the essence of separation so a simple practice in C or C++ program is that we keep all the contacts, macro, system-wide global variables, and function prototypes in the header files and include that header file wherever it is being required. So we just in include it. So we try to separate them, both the global variables and the like. So the syntax, this is the syntax. Hash, then the file name which is what hash include then this file usually we know it to be what main.h main.h in our case so and this what you can prepare directories to this this is just additional information we can now include directive include directive the the hash include directive work by directing the c processor to scan the specific files as inputs so this in hash include the work is to scan. We know hash include is a what is a preprocessor, and is to scan the specific files as input before continue the rest of the current source file. So scan it, check it, scan it before the current file, before the current source file. So the output from the processor contains the output already generated followed by the output resulting from the included file followed by the output that comes from the text after the hash include directives so for example if you have this other file 
the header.h as follow. So we have this character. This is a function, but this type of function is what is a pointer pointing to character and is taking what it takes no parameter. And a main program called program C that uses the header file like this. So int x, this is hash include. So we usually use it this way. Then we call the word the put s tests. So one only header file, once only header file. So if the header file happens to be included twice, the header file will process its content twice and it will result to an error. So we can't include it header file. Is the essence of this? Is the essence of this that okay? If it is not defined, that is, this we want to define. If it is not defined, eh, define it. It's just what to stop the error, because if we try to include this, that's already been defined. The prototype maybe it has already been defined before, and we now say what to define it for us. It's going to prompt an error. So that is why I say what if. The prototype you are defining has not been defined. Please define it for us. And after you define it, end it. End it. So we have global and local and global scope. Global. This is a global scope, while this is a local scope. A global scope, um, come, let me. I think the global scope is usually what defined above your main, above your main. Why the local one will be defined in your in your uh, code block and our local local scope and local scope. So I think we've come to the end of this class function. Then in our next class, we are going to move to these tags and solve. So let's rub my together and see how to solve that as well. This principle of global scope of variable can be summarized as shown below. All global variables are declared here. So global variable are declared function 100. So we've come to the end of this. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Same channel.